Well, BlackBerry is known as the company that once dominated and then lost the handheld market, but the company wants to be known as a provider of secure software, according to CEO John Chen. I spoke to him earlier at the Toronto Global Forum. I hope BlackBerry name means security. I mean, something you could trust. Um, you know, um, I think we talk about ourselves, you know, it, it, it should brand it as privacy, ultra security uh, of sort. So whether it's in, you know, a kitchen devices or a health devices and, uh, or on a handset, people look at it and say, this is a, this is a trusting device to have, you have good secure software in it. And I hope that's eventually what we will be known for. Do you feel as though the issue of security is um, that people are as aware of it as they should be, both consumers and governments? I think that people are aware. Um, I don't, I, the question is how much, um, how much importance do they put on it? I mean, everybody say it's important, um, but ultra security, how important is it to you? I mean, or is it, um, you know, you, you say, you know, it's kind of use an iPhone or Android phone or whatever you, you believe then, um, you know, good secure, you know, good is good enough, basically. And I think that's the, that's, that's the one thing that um, we have to overcome, um, is that, you know, when it comes to security and privacy, there shouldn't be any compromise whatsoever. Um, and, but people seem to be comfortable by trading data uh, for convenience, and we need to re-educate the world on that. One place where this is a very live file is on the build out of 5G networks. Are we, is there time still to make those properly secure or have we, have we gone too far down a road where there will be gaps in it? Well, 5G, um, I think as a, as a transport, couldn't really do everything regarding security. Um, and, and it gotta have to come from uh, both application and processes. Uh, and we, we're building a lot. I mean, we, what we're doing is we're using 5G's bandwidth capability and we're putting the security gateway into our, into our code. There's a lot of pieces for you. How much, uh, I mean, are, how can you focus that attention so that your R&D budget, so that your new innovation hits at the right spot? That is, um, a, that's a good, good question. Um, that is something that I'm, um, and the teams are working on very hard. Um, I, I, I think that, that is the, if I have to look at our number one challenge, is like you said, um, they, we have a number of pieces, arguably too many of them, and, and we need to start kind of, consolidate is the wrong word, it's, it's trying to make everything more synergistic so that there is more of a single theme. And you know, we pick the enterprise of things as kind of the market we go after. We pick secure communication as kind of the platform we're gonna build. And now my trick is, you know, or the job now is to bring everything into that platform. You mentioned partnership with uh, Baidu in China. China is one place where we hear security experts warn about state espionage, about intellectual property theft. Do you worry about, is there some irony in this company you want to be synonymous with security, partnering with a Chinese company? No, because what we're doing is we're, we're really, really only letting them to use our software. We're not co-developing anything with them and, um, and they, they only get the binary, they won't get the code, the source, and um, we're, we're aware of. Of, of potential problems. Is there a government in the world that you would trust to partner with in that way? Hopefully Canada, right? <laughs> Be nice to think so. <laughs> yes, uh, I, I think the Five I countries, um, we do reasonably well. Um, we, we do partner a lot with um, you know, Canada, US, and Australia.